Good day everyone! Welcome back again to our Science 10 lesson. And now we are in our quarter 2, week number 3 or module number 3. Our today's lesson since is entitled Applications of Electromagnetic Wave and these are based on SD Okaloocan self-learning module entitled SciEd, Staying Connected in Education, New Normal Communication Essentials. Here is our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to first, explain how radio waves are generated, transmitted, and received in television and radio communication. Second, discuss how microwaves are used in cooking, radar, and satellite communications. Third, explain how infrared waves are used in electronic appliances, night vision goggles, medical diagnosis, and communication. So before we start with our discussion, let's have first a review. We will have a story in our review. But our story has blanks in it. So we need to fill in the blanks with the correct word to complete the thought of our story. Our answers will come from the messages transmitted by the tower in the image below. So here are the words. We have electromagnetic wave. Alex Ron, Electromagnetic Spectrum, Wavelet, and Electric Current. So let us now begin and read and complete our story. Once upon a time, I met a lonely charge who always stays negative called Electron. He seldom moves, but once the conductor where it is placed is connected to a voltage source, it moves continuously and its motion is called electric current. A moving electron will have both electric field and magnetic field. The changing electric field and magnetic field generates electromagnetic wave. It is part of what is called an electromagnetic spectrum. The waves in the spectrum are different to one another in terms of wavelength and frequency. Higher frequency is associated to higher energy and shorter wavelength, while lower frequency means lower energy and longer wavelength. Because we are done reviewing, let us now proceed to the discussion of our lesson. To start with our discussion, I have prepared a photo collage about education in the new normal. Due to the pandemic, we are not able to meet with our face-to-face -face classes, so we really need to discover new modalities for us to be able to deliver your lessons every day. Are you familiar with what I am pointing in our collage? The first picture is the picture of the television. At present, the Department of Education has prepared different video lessons in different subjects that are made available in their TV broadcasts in different television stations or channels. The pictures below are the pictures of what is mainly used in our new normal education. On the right side, in the lower corner, we can see a student meeting up with his classmates in the computer connected via internet connection. In the left-hand corner, you can see pictures of mobile devices or gadgets such as cell phones. Cell phones are being used to connect with our students via internet or via simple communication in text or call messaging. You can see at the picture above, the picture of the teacher delivering his lesson using the microphones and as well as he meets his students in the other area by means again of a computer. All of these tools that I have given to you on our collage is what our electromagnetic wave applications are. So today we are going to discover 
how does it work? Let us take a look at this electromagnetic spectrum. And as what you can see on the pictures given are its practical applications. What we have in our new normal education setup are the communication devices. So these communication devices makes use of our types of electromagnetic waves that are or that have longer wavelengths which includes radio waves, microwaves, and infrared. So today we are going to emphasize these three types of electromagnetic waves and its applications. The first type of electromagnetic wave with its application that we will discuss are radio waves. Radio waves are part of the electromagnetic spectrum and, and has the longest wavelength among all. It carries the, long, the lowest energy since it has the lowest frequency. It is produced by a vibrating electric current in an antenna and is widely used for wireless communication. To send information via radio waves, a transmitting antenna known as transmitter, this one, sends out a radio wave at a certain frequency and this is received by a receiving antenna or the receiver. Radio waves bend around buildings and hills by diffraction and it is good at sending information to many people because it costs very little. So as you can see here in our picture above, you can see here a transmitter antenna sending out a specific frequency of radio waves that can be received by the antenna of a receiver. So for this cause, in our picture, we have the picture of a radio that has the receiver. This is the schematic diagram of radio waves transmission in radio or television. First, in a TV or radio station, electrical signals travel through the antenna that acts as a transmitter and convert it to radio waves. Next, the transmitter sends out the radio waves and it travels through the air. So in this case, the medium is our air. Then finally, the antenna that acts as a receiver captures the radio waves and turns them into electrical signals feeding into radio or television or a telephone system and converts it into sounds that we hear or light that enables us to see pictures and movements. So that is how our radio waves are being transmitted in our radio or television. And as you can see, the transmission is unidirectional, meaning the transmitted electromagnetic waves from our TV or radio station are then received only by the receiving antenna coming from our communication system such as radio, television, or telephone. Let us discuss about the radio waves transmission in cell phone. And for this setup, we are going to discuss about the call function. First, when you chat with your friend on your cell phone, your phone converts your voice into an electrical signal which is then transmitted via radio waves to the nearest cell tower. So when we have phone calls, we need to be near a cell site. And then the network of cell towers then relays the radio wave to your friend's phone. And finally, the radio waves are converted to an electrical signal and then back to sound again. That is why we can hear the voice of the person we are talking with through cell phone. So that's one is unidirectional. So we tend to give our reply to our uh, friend the other line. So what we really need to do is to repeat the step backwards. So for a reply, the step 3 will go first and then step 2 and then step 1. And that's what makes our radio waves transmission in cell phone in 
calling set up as bidirectional in nature. So when we say bidirectional, when one sends message, then he gets another message of reply from the other party. The second type of electromagnetic wave that we are going to discuss is microwaves. In terms of wavelength, microwave has shorter wavelength than radio wave, but longer than the other waves in the electromagnetic spectrum, and it is produced by a material called the magnetron. So you can see in the picture here at the right, the picture of the magnetron. Another type of electromagnetic wave that we are going to discuss are microwaves. Microwaves can penetrate through the atmosphere that is why it is best used if the broadcast is live via satellite. Because of its higher penetrating power than radio waves, we can broadcast all of the current events simultaneously in different devices using this type of electromagnetic wave. Also, microwaves are good in sending signals to specific receiver or what we call point-to-point -point communication. So, when we say point-to-point, -point, the electromagnetic waves that are being transmitted are very specific to certain types of gadgets where it needs to be sent out. And another most common application of microwaves is used for cooking. We all know the appliance name microwave oven and microwave ovens are used by heating up the water molecules from the food. And on our next slide, we are going to discover how this microwave oven works. So let's now answer the question how microwave oven works. So for this slide, we are going to answer how a microwave oven works. First. The microwave generator called magnetron takes electricity from the power outlet and then it goes to the transformer to increase the input voltage. Then the electric current goes to the magnetron that converts the increased voltage to a microwave. And then, our microwaves now travels through the wave guide. And it will hit the steerer that changes its direction and now able to enter the chamber of the oven. Inside the chamber, the microwaves scatter because it bounces off through the walls of the oven. Then, the water molecules of food absorb energy from the microwave, causing it to vibrate more quickly. The faster the molecules vibrate, the hotter the food becomes, causing the food to cook. So that will be based on our lesson from grade 8 about heat. So when we say that there is a heat in our object or in our matter, it vibrates more quickly thus increasing its temperature. Let us now discuss the microwave used in communication. And as what you can see, there are certain electromagnetic waves in the form of microwaves that is transmitted in different devices. And that is what we call point-to-point -point communication, wherein the microwaves are are then transmitted to specific devices. So point-to-point -point communication makes use of an outer space communication satellite. So these outer space communication satellites helps in the transmission of electromagnetic waves that are needed by different gadgets in different a range or locations. Another electromagnetic wave that we are going to discover is infrared. Infrared consists of electromagnetic frequencies between microwaves and visible light. It is most often associated with heat and it 
objects that contains heat has infrared radiation. Our body radiates infrared and the color of the infrared radiation depends on the temperature of the body part emitting the wave that is why under infrared cameras or night goggles or night vision camera our image appear colorful. And these are what our infrared is most applicable at these new normal times. I know that some of you have gone through different establishments right now and it is very obvious that we use to have temperature check. And what do you call this type of thermometer? Yes, that is a gun thermometer. Our gun thermometer uses infrared technology. Also, in our airports, we have installed different infrared devices such as this thermal camera that is used to uh, for us to be able to determine what is the temperature of the body of those people who will enter the premises of our airport. Also, one of the applications of infrared is our remote controls. So we are going to discover how these things work. Let us now watch a video on how a remote control works. So let us watch this all together. A remote control is essential. A remote control is essentially a very clever torch. In fact, some early remote controls were exactly that. By shining a torch at one of four sensors, you could control basic mechanical functions. Modern remotes use infrared radiation instead of visible light. The front of a remote control houses an LED, which generates a beam of infrared, traveling at the speed of light across your living room. The front of the TV houses a sensor which can detect the infrared beam. The remote controls the functions of the TV by transmitting different signals using binary code. Each button is assigned a pattern of ones and zeros, which the remote interprets by flashing the LED on and off rapidly in the same pattern. These bursts are received by the TV, which is programmed to understand the specific codes and turn them into actions. At the same time, the remote also sends a code which identifies the make and model of... So there is a very informative video from the Telegraph YouTube channel. So as you can see, we, not, we need not to uh, interfere with our remote controls. So there are certain materials where in our remote controls can transmit uh, electromagnetic waves uh, smoothly so we really need to take note of those materials. Now let us now discuss how an infrared camera works. So first we have a scene and we all know that every object has these differences in their temperature. The infrared energy is emitted proportionately to the temperature of the object. So different colors calls of different uh, temperature in different parts of the body or object of the subject. The infrared energy from objects in the scene is focused by an optic lens. The energy is focused onto an infrared de detector. The information is passed to sensor electronics for image processing. So when we when the signals have then uh, transmitted to our monitor, the signal has been processed. Circuitry translate the infrared detector data into an image that can be viewed on an electronic display. So that is how our infrared camera works. So the imagery that is product of infrared electromagnetic wave is what we call infrared thermography. Infrared thermography is developed 
for us to be able to know the differences in the temperature of different objects in the same event. So we have here visual image of an ordinary camera and we have here the image created by the infrared camera. So when we mix the function of the two, the ordinary and the thermal camera, you can see what are the faces or what are the parts of the body where there is greater heat. And as you can see, an area with a red color means that that part or that body part is warm. Another application of the infrared is the night vision photography. So, night vision photography is developing images of dark areas using this type of electromagnetic wave. So, it makes use of an infrared camera or a night vision camera. This night vision camera has this ability to detect the heat that is emitted by different areas all over this range of imagery. So as you can see, the image created by standard night vision is much darker than one with enhancements made by infrared. So as you can see here, some areas are bright and we all know that when there is light, there is more or there is an increase in temperature. So that is how our night vision photography works. So we make use of the detectors found inside the infrared or night vision cameras. All for our lesson. So these are the things that you need to remember. First, you should remember that radio waves are electromagnetic waves that have the longest wavelengths, the lowest frequencies, and the lowest energies. Radio waves travel easily through the atmosphere and many materials. So when it comes to range, so we have the widest range for the radio waves. Microwaves are EM waves with shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies, and higher energy than other radio waves. Radio, uh, microwaves get their name from the fact that their wavelengths are generally shorter than that or than those of radio waves. Infrared radiation is the type of electromagnetic wave most often associated with heat. Waves in this range are sometimes called heat rays and it consists of EM frequencies between microwaves and visible. As we are done with our lesson, let us now check your understanding. So for our checking of understanding, we will be having a multiple choice test. So the direction tells that we need to choose the letter of the correct answer from the choices below. And here is the first question. What type of electromagnetic wave is used for cooking food? Again, what type of electromagnetic wave is used for cooking food? Letter A, infrared. Letter B, microwave. Letter C, radio wave. Letter D, visible light. The correct answer is letter B, microwave. Next question. How radio waves propagate? Again, how radio waves propagate? A. Radio waves propagate through solid media. Letter B. Radio waves can travel at a speed of light in vacuum. Letter C. Radio waves propagate like the other electromagnetic waves. Letter D. Radio waves can propagate from the transmitter to the receiver. Correct answer is letter D. Radio waves can propagate from the transmitter to the receiver. Third question. What characteristic of radio waves made it possible to be used in wireless communication? Again, what characteristic of radio waves made it possible to be used in wireless communication? Letter A. Higher frequency. Letter B. Shorter wavelength. Letter C, higher energy, or letter D, longer wavelength. Correct! The answer is letter D, longer wavelength. Fourth 
question. Why does a person appear colored when seen using an infrared camera? Again, why does a person appear colored when seen using an infrared camera? A. Because the body transmits visible light. B. Because of the lenses present in the camera. Letter C. Because it is designed to give a colored image of a person. Letter D. Because of the differences in the temperature of the different body parts. Correct! The answer is letter D. Because of the differences in the temperature of the different body parts. Tip question. What part of electromagnetic spectrum is used in sending signals to a specific station or point-to-point? -point? Again, what part of the EM spectrum is used in sending signals to a specific station or point-to-point? -point? A. Infrared B. Microwave C. Radio wave D. Visible light The correct answer is microwave so that ends our check your understanding and here is what you're going to do with your scores when your score is four to five points you can move to the next lesson if your scores are two to three points you need to check your misconceptions or wrongly answered items if your points is zero to one point you need Watch this video lesson again. Congratulations! Thank you for watching this video lesson for our week 3 or module number 3 for second quarter. And here are my Facebook and YouTube account so that you can connect with me if you have any questions or suggestions. So here are my reference or guide for this video lesson and this video is intended for educational purposes only. So see you next time and thank you very much. Bye!